Hey YouTube, Devin here with Comics and Stuff. Welcome back, happy Friday. Hope you guys had a great week, I know I did. Uh, hope you guys like my new little setup here. I am trying a couple different new things. So I uh, took you know a lot of my stuff and took this little corner of the living room and set it up. You know, got my shelf here with my books, my statues, a couple of my Funko Pops. Got a nice big wall here for some art and a pretty window. So uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, today, the video, this video is uh, what are pulp magazines. So a lot of people have asked me uh, what they are, what the difference is between them and comic books. Um, you know, you may have actually run across a pulp magazine yourself if you're at a comic con. You find somebody who's dealing with older, uh, older comic books or like antique toys, and a lot of times they will have a bin of pulp magazines. They're those older magazines that have these really gorgeous painted covers, and they're like text anthologies on the inside. Uh, a lot of people will consider pulp magazines to be early precursors to comic books. Other people will say that they existed alongside comic books, XYZ. Uh, so I'm here to kind of settle that debate once and for all and talk about what uh, are pulp magazines, what they are, where, where they came from. Um, so pulp magazines, they, they like I said, they were inexpensive anthology magazines with these like beautiful, gorgeous, like painted covers. Um, and they were... Um, published between the late 1890s and the uh, 1950s so pretty old but they still ran along the, you know the platinum golden and silver age ish of comic books uh, the term pulp magazine was actually came from uh, the cheap pulp or wood pulp paper that they were made out of so regular magazines you'd call them a glossy because they're made of like really fine high quality paper but pulp magazines were printed on just like cheap throwaway paper so um, <clears throat> the earliest known pulp magazine was published in 1896. I'm not actually sure which one that is. Um, and then the, um, they were, oh God, uh, the pulp magazines, they were considered, like I said, to be earlier predecessors to like comic books, but, um, they were actually considered to be predecessors to, by a lot of historians to things like, uh, Penny Dreadfuls and Dime Novels. So Penny Dreadfuls and Dime Novels were... I mean, penny dreadfuls and dime novels. They were a penny and a dime, and they weren't uh, expensive. They were just like little tiny pocket books you could read, little stories, X, Y, Z. Um, and, you know, really nice condition ones can go for some pretty expensive stuff. In any case, though, um, <clears throat> so like I said, the first uh, earliest known pulp magazine that was published was published in 1896. Um, there was actually a couple really critically acclaimed pulp magazines. Um, there, The top were Argosy. Uh, adventure, Blue Book, and Short Stories. Those four, those were like the big four of uh, published pulp magazines. Those were the ones that sold copies in the millions. Uh, all in all, there was about 150 different pulp magazines uh, that were uh, that were published and popular series in their height, like I said, <clears throat> were selling, yeah, over, well over a million copies, uh, you know, per issue. Uh, my personal favorite series was uh, Thrilling Wonder Stories. They have these really, like, classic, gorgeous sci-fi covers. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I've posted a couple. I'll, I'll there should be a picture. Uh, the dinosaur cover that I have is by far one of my most favorite pulp magazine covers ever. Um, so a lot of characters, uh, you know, despite popular belief, uh, a lot of characters had their start in pulp magazines. Um, this is again before you'll you'll have heard this term before pulp hero. Um, those were characters that came out like I said, in pulp magazines prior to comic books. And a lot of these characters, uh, people wouldn't have thought of. So characters like uh, John Carter of Mars, he um, appeared in Argosy, the All Story in 1912. Uh, Buck Rogers, he appeared in Amazing Sto first appeared in Amazing Stories 19 in 1928. Uh, Tarzan, he appeared in Argosy, the All Story um, in a short story called Tarzan of the Apes in 1912. Uh, Zorro, uh, first appeared in Argosy the All Story uh, in 1919. Uh, the Shadow, which is a really popular character, appeared in The Living Shadow in 1931, so that predates Superman. Conan the Barbarian, uh, Weird Tales in 1932. Uh, Doc Savage, who's getting his own movie, and I believe uh, everybody, the rumor is that The Rock or whatever is going to be playing in it. Um, so Doc Savage, he appeared in Doc Savage Magazine 1933. And then the Green Llama, which is a weird one, but a really popular character who actually eventually translated over into comic books just like, um, you know, John Carter of Mars, John Buck Rogers, uh, you know, The Shadow. They've all translated over into comics. The Green Llama did as well, but only in the Golden Age. He first appeared in Double Detective in 1940. So that's not all of the big big name characters that appeared in uh, pulp magazines, but those were some of the big names that did. Um, <clears throat> so in 1941, this, this is how uh, pulp magazines kind of like went down. Um, 1941, pulp magazines, uh, they began to switch to digest size 
uh, and then in World War II, as many of you guys know, the uh, World War II crippled like the paper industry or pulp industry, both of them. Um, you know, there's a bunch of paper recycling. Um, you know, like runs and people were throwing away old comic books. That's why Golden Age comic books are so rare because a lot of them were thrown away and destroyed, uh, you know, and people needed war bonds and things like that. So people would donate to things that they considered to be useless. And back then there were old comic books and pulp magazines. So 1941, um, yeah, World War II totally crippled the uh, pulp industry. And um, by 1949, some of the largest pulp magazines had switched to uh, magazines to save on um, – because they were skinnier, less paper, a little bit of a higher quality, but it saved on paper and production cost. So this was kind of the, uh, the downfall. 1957, the American News Company, which was the primary distributor of pulp magazines, uh, they liquidated, and that technically effectively ended the pulp era, so just early of the uh, Silver Age of comic books. And then the collapse of the paper industry um, – this is just kind of like a side note, but the collapse of the paper industry totally changed the publishing landscape just because like pulps like this, like I said, they were like the single largest uh, sales outlet for like short stories. So combined with the decrease in like the uh, those those glossy slick like magazine fiction markets, uh, writers were attempting to support themselves by creating fiction that switch and um, and switched over to like things like nudity and erotic books and uh, book length anthologies of shorter pieces. And a lot of writers that were in uh, the pulp industry ended up becoming well-known publishers because they couldn't publish in pulp magazines anymore, so they went and did their own stuff. Um, a good example would be like characters like Tarzan of the Apes and Buck Rogers. They all switched over to comic books. But like, uh, you're wondering maybe why, Devin, why did you mention nudity and erotica? A, a lot of pulp writers back in the day switched over to that because they were able to, you know, get their stories published and in a different market, I guess. And that, I guess, uh, according to what I read. It did, it did a lot of stuff. Um, I know that's not the, the best term, but it was for lack of a better term. In any case, though, so that is the history of the pulp magazine. They started in the late 1890s, went all the way into the 1950s, um, but then crashed after uh, World War II and um, eventually just switched over to magazines and eventually closed out. Uh, you can still find wonderful pulp magazines available today. Um, there you can find them at your local comic con you can find them on ebay some of them go for a little some of them go for a lot i think the oldest one that i have was published and printed the year and month that my grandfather was born so june 1931 um but uh you know some of them i mean first appearance of doc savage first appearance of the shadow i mean those can go for quite some money so keep your eyes up for them um and if i could have done anything better in this video please let me know you know i wish i uh had more information to give you guys but if you have any questions comments concerns please let me know in the comments below make sure that you guys give lots of love to the instagram the facebook the twitter uh and make sure you support the red bubble store uh but that's really it guys so thank you so much for tuning in uh and enjoy the rest of your week and i'll see you next friday <laughs>